Imagine if you could search for anything and then have it pop into AR in your world, like the Mars Curiosity rover, or what if reality were browsable? Well, that's kind of what Google is doing here at Google I.O. with AR and with Lens. For instance, Google is introducing AR into Google search, so you can find 3D objects on AR Core and AR Kit, iPhone and Android phones, and then be able to pop those models into the real world at scale, like NASA's Curiosity rover, which is right next to me. For your safety, use a low light. On the lens side, Google is exploring all sorts of things that will browse the world, such as you know, translating things, menus, paintings, and finding ways to analyze that and pop it up on the fly for you to look at. AR is being integrated into Google search, both on Android and iOS. And the way it works is that when you search for something, if there's a 3D object, it'll appear if you have an AR Core or AR Kit supported Android or iPhone. When you tap on that, it'll bring up a 3D object, and then it will launch, if you want, into the real world in AR. It's interesting because Google search is kind of an extension of thought, and if you can get that seamless enough, maybe future AR experiences or headsets could conjure things on the fly as needed. Google's working with a few partners right now, including NASA, which has the Curiosity rover, and certain things will pop up in Google Knowledge Graph, like this tiger, complete with animation and sound. <laughs> Google Lens is another spin on AR. Google's been exploring ways in which cameras can analyze the real world, kind of like what we thought Google Glass was going to do way back in 2013. Lens can capture and analyze and bring up information that it sees. The new spins to Google Lens are adding even faster and more AR-like experiences to that app, both for Android and iOS. Using old ATM Google Lens's new features are aiming to make the real world more browsable. So for instance, Google's got menus that can now pop up with highlights of commonly ordered dishes. You could translate something and have it actually map to the object so that you can move around in space and see the language stick to whatever it's on. Google's also exploring ways to bring up Harry Potter-like experiences in photos or in posters so that you could look at it and have it magically come alive. Or in museums, Google's exploring ways that Lens can pop up information in location-specific instances. For instance, at the de Young Museum, bringing up curated information on paintings that's different than what Google Search would provide. The magical translation features of Google Lens are also coming to low-end Android Go phones. The idea is that anyone who needs help to translate languages or even to learn how to read could use this on the go and be able to read a sign, scan what it says, and have it read back and even highlight what's being read. That combination of features could help accessibility and could help people with situational literacy, according to Google. For your safety, use a low light during the day. Para sua segurança, use uma luz baixa durante o dia. This could be useful not only for translation, but for people who need visual assistance. Google Lens is supposed to work automatically when you launch it, but Google's also launching a number of filters that will help it interpret things in specific instances. For instance, shopping, dining, and translate. Shopping could be useful, for instance, if you're looking at a plant, where you could analyze what it is if you're using auto mode, but in shopping, it'll actually help you find out where to buy that plant. AR has entered Google Search, and AR is increasingly on Google Lens. Will those start to dovetail and intertwine? Well, that seems to be the idea. And at Google I.O., it looks like there's a lot of exploration about what that future will be. Right now, it's on the phone. Google doesn't have an AR headset yet, but at some point, it might. And this looks like the beginning of that AR magic glue.